cannot tell you how excited I am today. Why? Because we have entered a new year. Come on, say Happy New Year! Come on! And we're ready, right? We're ready to give him praise. We're ready to worship him. We're ready to hear a wonderful word from our men of God. What excites me most is all across the country. Hallelujah. I don't know how often this happens, but all across the country, people are celebrating God on the first day of the year. Hallelujah. That's a blessing. So those of you who are joining us virtually, Please feel free to say Happy New Year in the comments if you're on Facebook. Even um, if you're joining us via YouTube, we are so happy that you've chosen to be with us today. We're looking forward to a blessing from the Lord. So I'm going to move on out of the way and let our praise team take us in this morning. But let's keep that excitement going. Keep, yes, come on, keep it going. Hallelujah. Now I'll be back with announcements at the end of the service. Thank you. the Lord has set his love upon me. He delivers me. He has set me on high because I have known his name. I call upon him and he answers me. He is with me in trouble. He delivers and honors me. With long life he satisfies me and shows me his salvation. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you for your protection, Father.
is the King of glory, the Lord strong and mighty, the Lord the mighty in battle. Hallelujah. like you, O oh God. We lift our voices and cry to you. You are the Savior of our soul. We bless you. Hallelujah. You are
Sing a song unto the Lord. Bless his name in your heart. With the fruit of your lips, just begin to sing out before him. He's worthy to be praised. Lord, you word, we glorify you. There's none like you, Lord. We bless your name. We bless your name.
Hallelujah. 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 Bless his name. Bless his name. Bless his name. He's the king of glory. The Lord strong and mighty. Bless his name. this morning. You may be seated for a presentation.
Lord. 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 silence, honor your presence. In silence, we honor your presence. You are so holy that their words are mere human words, cannot adequately celebrate who you are power, your presence, the way you perform miracles, the way you open doors, the way you change people's lives, the way you bless us, the way you walk with us, the way you talk with us. You've been our counselor. You've been our friend. You are the friend that sticks closer than any brother. So we lift our hands to you. Heaven, heaven only knows of your greatness. Angels only can look into your luster, your brilliance, your excellence, your supremacy. We bless you, Father. We bless you, Father. We bless you, Father. For the Lord is good. For the Lord is good. For the Lord is good. We thank you for this new year. Thank you for how you have promised to be with us. We lift our hands to celebrate every pain that you brought us through. Physical pains, psychological pains, physiological pains emotional pains, financial pains, relational pains, but you brought us. We lift our hands to say thank you. We enter into your gates with thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. We lift our hands to give you praise. You said to me yesterday, Lord, the only man the only woman that doesn't praise you with lifted hands is someone who either doesn't understand or they're full of pride. So we lay our pride down to lift our hands to celebrate the King, the great King Eternal, the Lord our God, who is awesome. And we give you praise. For this meeting today, Lord, we thank you for your sanction. Thank you for the singers. Thank you for the songs. Thank you for the dancers. Thank you for the minstrelists. And thank you for these praisers who are here. And Lord, as we delve into your word, I thank you that you'll use me. Help me, Lord. You know 
I don't have anything to say unless you say it. Lord, to help guide your people into the things that you've shown me that are coming. But you've shown me, Lord, that if we will abide in you and allow your word to abide in us, we will be victorious. So I claim it now in the name of Jesus. We are victorious. We are the church triumphant, hallelujah. Glory to God forevermore and bless his name. Hallelujah. Come on, say it with me, hallelujah. hallelujah. Say it again, hallelujah. hallelujah. I'm trying to get myself together here. There's something that happens when you know what is ahead and it can be rocky, but God has given you a word of assurance that you're gonna be all right. Glory to God forevermore. Church, I came to tell you we're gonna be all right, hallelujah. There was a city right outside, just outside of Egypt, and the name of the city was Goshen. G-O-S-H-E-N. And when Jacob brought his family there, 70 souls, just 70 souls, Joseph negotiated with the Pharaoh and he said, Pharaoh said, well, just put them in Goshen. Now, everything that happened to Egypt in, in terms of the 10 plagues happened in Egypt proper. But as long as they were in Goshen, I came today to show you how to stay in Goshen. I, I can end it now and just tell you, I don't need to teach it, but your praise, your worship, your thanksgiving is going to preserve you when everything else is crazy. Because I'm telling you, it's about to get real. But you're gonna be all right because you're learning the key to transformation is praise, worship, and thanksgiving. Now, if you don't have those three keys, I'm telling you, things are gonna get rough. But as long as you have those keys, you're gonna be all right. Just as sure as there was Egypt, there was Goshen. And just as sure as there were 10 plagues, they remained untouched as long as they were in the city that God put his anointing on. And you are the people of God, and God has placed his anointing on your life, and it's an anointing of preservation, it's an anointing of power, and it's an anointing of elevation. Even in the midst of dire situations, you're gonna be promoted. But you've gotta know these ingredients I'm giving you. You gotta know these ingredients. Glory to God. So let's take our communion now. Thank you so much. I tried to uh, come out of my office. I was eating my breakfast and thank God for the persons who serve so faithful. I'm gonna open these together. And uh, as soon as the singers engaged, I was like, man, I'm trying to hold this together. And I, it just, I just couldn't keep it together. And uh, the closer I got to the stage, the more wiped out I got. <laughs> And so Lorenzo was walking with me. He said, uh, he was telling security, Eagle is coming, uh, whatever they say, uh, in flight, I think it is. And uh, Mike's not supposed to say that, but anyway. Uh, I said, barely, barely. And then when I got to the door, he said, no, you're not just barely. He said, you're soaring. I said, I receive that, I receive that. I mean, no, sometimes you need somebody say the right thing to you when you come in. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It's the right thing. I said, I we'll be all right. Glory to God. Uh, this is, I want to release this over your households. Those of you that are not with us in person, as well as these that are in here upstairs and down. Uh, this is the communion for the year. And so I'm pronouncing, on, they'll put that on the screen. Uh, 1 John chapter 1, uh, verse 3. 
I think it is, whatever passage I sent up there. Or, yeah, 1 John chapter 1, verse 3. That which we have seen and heard declare we unto you. This is John who also walked with Jesus. That ye also may have fellowship with us. Everyone say fellowship. fellowship. Say it again, please. Fellowship. fellowship. With us. And truly our fellowship is with the Father and with His Son, Jesus Christ. The Lord asked me to come here today and have this communion with us together as well as electronically that we, and we will declare that we have fellowship with the Father. Now let me give you a def definition, and you already know this, but um, this word communion literally means the act or instance of sharing the realization of a spiritual union between Christ and the communicant, that's you, or as the body and blood of Christ. To, to have this kind of fellowship, I was praying over this early this morning and the Lord said to me, um, some people have been hurt by being uh, bereft, the, the absence of people they loved this year, 20, this past year now, 2022. And if you can understand fellowship with the Father, this means that He's going to walk you through everything that broke your heart. He, he'll walk you through everything that hurts you. He'll give you answers to dilemmas, things you don't know as you fellowship with Him. He'll talk to you about it. Places that uh, in life, you know, life can have some snags. And you hit a place. But when you have fellowship with him, he knows how to negotiate and navigate through all of those difficult places. Uh, some people have not had better emerging years only because they didn't know how to get out of last year's problem. And they carried the amalgamation of problems into the upcoming year, and the same thing happened, and the same thing happened, and the same thing happened. But this year, I declare that we have fellowship with the Father. Now notice what he said, fellowship with Jesus, and then fellowship through Jesus with the Father, so that the same fellowship that Jesus enjoys with his Father, we now enjoy with the Father through Jesus Christ. So Father, as we receive this communion today, we declare in the name of Jesus, fellowship. To the point, that, as you showed me this morning, early, that we walk with you and you with us, that even our routines can be broken up. If you say to us, go home another way, because we have fellowship with you, you know where all the accidents are, where the wrong vehicles are, and where the wrong getting on the wrong plane is and you know all of that and you knew all of that before the earth was founded but as we fellowship with you you'll reveal yourself to us yes you'll show us where to put our money with whom to invest it and you'll show us how to divest you'll show us when, the time, when it's time to walk away from things You'll show us how to eat and not eat. You'll show us where to purchase and how to purchase. Oh, yes, Lord, and we won't move until we have an unction. And that's how sure we are about the fellowship. We will not move on anything until we have an unction. Yes, yes, Lord. And that unction will be the unction of peace. As long as there's turbulence, we'll, we'll know not to move. But out of our fellowship with you, we will have peace. Hallelujah. Yeah, and just like you, sh you showed me the other day, Lord, yeah, about that situation. Uh, yes, 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 Lord. And when the medical community has to be involved because of other things where our faith has not yet taken us, you will show us how to pray for the peace for the right doctors, the right teams, in the name of Jesus. And we will know 
when you are not unctionizing, sanctioning a particular move by way of the absence of peace. And we won't, we will not move again in this year, year or any of the years to come until we have peace. Yes, peace. Yes, peace. The peace of God. The peace of God. Hallelujah. We receive now in the name of Jesus and we take this communion and we symbolize that our sins have been forgiven past, present, and future in Jesus' name. Let's take the bread, hold it up, say the body of Jesus Christ. You may now eat. Let's open the wine compartment, if you will, wine. Say the blood of Jesus gives me access and fellowship with the Father. And through this fellowship, I have healing, health, prosperity, wealth, the ministry of angels, safety, soundness, and provision in all times, in these times, and in all times, in the name of Jesus. You may now drink. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We're now bone of your bone and flesh of your flesh. These helpers are now moving upstairs and down. Thank you all as you uh, relieve yourselves of your leftovers. Then you may be seated in the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ. Happy New Year, everyone. God bless you. I want to get in to the Word of God, but let's receive our offering this morning. If we can help you with an offertory envelope, or we can help you uh, with, I receive that, speak f- your future into your life in the name of Jesus. Long life, long life, long life, long life. And, and somebody else, if you've been challenged with anything, uh, speak long life, long life. Yeah, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. No death in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. <clears throat> Glory. Glory. All right. I'll try this again. Uh, Romans chapter 12, verse 8. There's a statement in the middle of the uh, verse. For he that exhorteth on exhortation, he that giveth, let him do it with simplicity. That's what I want. He that giveth, let him do it with simplicity. I asked the Lord, what is the simplicity he's referring to? And I never asked this question before. He so New Testament giving is, new t- is giving with simplicity. Well, what is simplicity? It's the simple fact of understanding where there is no seed, there can be no harvest. And I would say to you, don't bother the simplicity of the message of giving. It's simple. Whether you call it the tithe, the offering, the first fruit, sacrificial seed, the first time I've ever given this way seed, I hear the Lord speaking to my heart seed, whatever it is, the simplicity of giving is in understanding where there is the absence of giving, there can be no harvest. No need to pray about it because that's complicated. No need to fast over it, that complicates the matter. The simplicity of giving is to understand that not even God could get a harvest until he gave seed. And he's the God that made the universe. And so many people are challenged today financially and fiscally because they have interfered with the simplicity of giving. Here it is. Hebrews chapter 2 verse 10, for it became him Jesus, for whom are all things and by whom are all things. In other words, he made everything. He's the spoken word of God. But watch this. In bringing many sons unto glory to make the captain of their salvation perfect through sufferings, which means that God had to give Jesus and make Jesus a seed so that he could have the harvest of souls that would come in because of that seed. That's simple, that God honored the principle of sowing seed to the extent that he gave his only begotten son. Now you have some other begotten dollars. He had one son 
And I'm saying to us, every time it's an offering time, each time the Lord is talking to you about giving, never interfere with the simplicity of the principle that not even God could override the principle when he wanted all of us to come into his glory, to come into his family. He had to give the only seed he had, which was his son, Jesus Christ. And so, Father, as we come together today, I thank you that you'll speak to your people about the seed and seeds that we are to sow both today and in days to come. Seeds that break the yoke of bondage, financial, economic bondage. As you've shown me, Father, half of the gospel message is to teach and preach salvation by grace that we're saved through faith. The other half is to understand that that salvation brings divine provision, divine provision, supernatural increase, supernatural wealth, supernatural abundance. For what good would it be to bring slaves out of Egypt and to then not provide anything for their lifestyles? But you didn't do that, Lord. You brought them out and then you blessed them with silver and gold and with the finest of the Egyptian apparel. Now we sow our seeds together today as a collective, as members of the new covenant. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. And we receive the provisions of the open heaven now in Jesus' name, in the name of Jesus. Now on your screen, there's information about your giving. If you are giving electronically or digitally, of course, you will identify the campus that you are desirous of supporting. At the very top of the graphic, it will give you the name of the campus. In this case, on the screen now, and screens, is New Life Interfaith Ministries. All of the pertinent details of giving are related to that particular campus. In this case, this particular campus, the diffused box, if you bring the camera portion of your device up and allow it to focus in. It will take you to the various electronic and digital prompts where your giving that God has spoken to you about can be honored. Keep with, stay with the simplicity of giving. Everyone say the simplicity of giving. It's pretty simple, is it not? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Without that seed and without a divine seed, there cannot be a divine or supernatural harvest. The online giving is for when you're watching the ministry videos which are out online. Yeah, you, the Lord speaks to you about giving. Tabulate over to that particular part of the um, web page and then you can uh, do your part in terms of giving. The mailing information is there for your convenience. For those who like to mail in their gifts, which we appreciate, same holds true for the text to give information. Now make sure you're identifying the campus at the very top because all the information and details are relative to each campus. And we appreciate your support. If you are giving while you're in person here today when you're departing, um, the ushers and helpers at the door will have their uh, receptacles so you can deposit your seed and get it growing. If you're coming through this um, campus, New Life Interfaith Ministries, Monday through Friday, 8.30 a.m. until 5.30 p.m. You can stop off your gift and or gifts for contactless, touchless giving. If you're supporting the Calvary Resurrection Campus, Monday through Friday, 9.30 a.m. until 3.30 p.m. for contactless, touchless giving. And so let's make this confession today. Father, thank you for this opportunity to sow my seed into your kingdom. I thank you, Lord, for the simplicity of giving. And now I follow your lead and your example just as you gave Jesus Christ your only begotten son so that you could receive many sons into your glory I give my seed today and I receive many supernatural divine harvests into my life now so that every need is met all bills are paid and I'm completely and totally out of debt. I confess now that as a member of the new covenant, I receive the million flow in and upon my life and upon my businesses in the name of Jesus. I confess it now 
because it is so in Jesus' name. And everyone said aloud and together, amen. God bless you. Thank you so much for your gifts. We appreciate you so very, very, very much. Um, thank God. I want to get into the Word of God. Thank you, music department. Thank you, music ministry. Thank you, singers. Uh, thank you, dancers. Let's give them all a round of applause. We appreciate everyone so very much. Amen. Remember, we applaud men, but we praise God. Amen. The power of, excuse me, the payoff of praise. The payoff of praise. This is our New Year's Day message, 2023. And the objective of this message is to prepare believers with keys, vital keys, critical keys of success, even in turbulent times. I'm realizing the younger I get that a part of my assignment is to adequately prepare God's people so that regardless of what comes, we will not only survive, but we thrive. Amen? Amen. I want to give you uh, about five hashtags, and two of these, or maybe three, I'm not sure now, the uh, media department does not have. Um, or they may have them now. I might have sent them up this time, but when I sent this message earlier, uh, I did not have these other two or three, but they should have them all. <clears throat> all these represent, all these hashtags, which is the old numerical symbol, all of these hashtags represent uh, messages I was going to preach in, in the place of this one. <laughs> okay, so there are five other messages. The one I'm going to teach you is the sixth. All right? Uh, hashtag praises benefits. Praises benefits. Are you all comfortable? You all are cold? Okay, a little back off of it, a degree or two on both sides, so make sure you all are comfortable, because uh, I don't want you all to act frigid. This is wonderful, but we're, we're, we're going to get, get you comfortable. Someone said, thank you? Okay, you're welcome. <laughs> you all are really that cold? Okay. Some of you like you're pretending, but okay. <laughs> you know, some of us, we always do the most. Always, but okay, we're going to get you comfortable very quickly. It won't take long. Um, praises, benef hashtag praises, benefits. There are insurmountable or let's just say incalculable benefits that come when a believer understands what it is to praise. Secondly, hashtag the power of praise. There's a power that is released in a believer's life when they are praising. Now, I'm using some words interchangeably. When I say praise, I'm also speaking of worship and thanksgiving. They're all interchangeable as far as this lesson is concerned. The third one is praise produces, hashtag praise produces a shift. Praise produces a shift. If it's time for a shift in your life, it will only come as a believer when you are a participant in praise, worship, and thanksgiving on a personal basis, on an ongoing basis, on a regular... As a matter of fact, we entered into a covenant. Some of you uh, have not been here perhaps for a while, so you've missed this. Uh, and we are getting up every day and making sure praise is the first thing off of our lips, even before you get up. I try to say it three times. I start with praise God, praise God, praise God. And it takes me into, I don't know how many times I say it, but it's the first thing I say. And then um, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. This week was hallelujah, hallelujah. My eyes are open, hallelujah. There, there's a world outside of the world I'm presently engaged in and with, and this world that I'm, I'm, I'm exalting is more powerful than the world in which I'm engaged. And if I will engage the other world, angels will come and minister to me. Change situations, glory to God. Transformation, hallelujah. Uh, and then fourthly, hashtag gathering the spoil. Gathering the spoils. Okay, did I put the S on that time? Okay, that's fine. Because some of you 
Some of you have spoils that I need to teach you about today. But someone else can't gather your spoils. By the time I get ready to close this in the next few minutes, you'll see what I'm saying. You can't say someone else can praise God, worship God, enter into thanksgiving, and gather your spoils. You won't have to know how to get your own spoils. And then finally, hashtag a different kind of king, no spaces. Really wanted to teach this one, a different. Jesus just was a different kind of king. And David saw him coming in the 24th number of the Psalms, and he said, who is this king? <laughs> who? David was a king. That was a statement coming from a king about a king. He said, who is this king of glory? That told it all right there, that this kind of king doesn't come and in, invade an environment until that atmosphere is set by giving him glory. That's the atmosphere in which he operates in heaven, and he doesn't inhabit any other thing but that. So he's another kind of king. And even at his birth, well, let's just go into it. So <clears throat> in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 18 from the New Living Translation, um, the scripture says this, is the apostle Paul writing to the church in Thessalonica, and he says, be thankful in, in, everyone say in, in all circumstances. How many of you found yourselves, yourself rather, in uh, a vicissitude of uh, circumstances last year, various circumstances last year, all kinds of things, you know. What the old people say, first one thing, then another. Then some of the other ones said, if it, was, if it isn't one thing, it's just all. But see, the key is, the scripture says, be thankful in, in. See, you have to do this when you're in it. You, you can't wait until things change because in your waiting, you're going to delay it. Be thankful in. That's a preposition, in. It, it speaks to a position. Be thankful in all, come on, circumstances. Your King James Version says things. For this is, come on, God's will, make it personal, for me. For me, because I belong to Christ Jesus. So this is, the, this is the demarcation of the believer that regardless of what shows up, praise God. I worship and I bless your name. Not because I'm in this situation, but because of what I know changes this situation. The Amplified Version of the same um, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 18 in every situation, how many of you had some situations? How many of you have a few lingering now? How many of you are wise enough to know there are some situations that have your name on them and they're waiting for you? And it, God says, this is my will for you because I will for you to be victorious. So here's a key. He says, in every situation, no matter what the circumstances no matter what the circumstances, be thankful and continually. That disqualified most right there. Continually give thanks to God. For this is the will of God for you, for me, in Christ Jesus. So if I'm not giving God thanks in the midst of every circumstance and or situation, I'm out of the will of God. I'm out of the will of God. He's giving me these keys to transform every situation. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 20. Giving thanks always, King James Version, for all things. Whoa, now that's different. In all things, I can handle that. But there have been some situations I don't want to thank him for. Somebody you love passes away prematurely, just say that for example, right? You don't want to say, Lord, thank him, for, I give you praise and thanksgiving for this person just whom I love so dearly just passed away or transitioned. No. And so it goes against our nature. But he says, giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. So now he says, in things, situations, circumstances, and conditions, and even for 
various circumstances and conditions. The reason for this is that you know if God allowed this, now you're going to have to be mature to get this one, if God allowed this situation to show up in my life, he has some information that is on a higher level than my mind can handle. So even in the midst of this, Father, I bless you. I don't understand all this, but you didn't tell me I had to. I give you praise because you're up to something. And this we know that all things. See, y'all don't believe the Bible. I said you don't believe the Bible. Romans chapter 8, what is it, 28? And this we know, all things, all things. You just thought it was the good things. But he said all things work together for good. For good to those who love the Lord, those who are the called according to his purpose. Everything that shows up, even the devil's afflictions, will work out for your good. If you understand how to praise God in the midst of it. You see, there are some things, precious people of God, you don't even, you can't even grasp until there's a, a dimension of spiritual maturity. There's some things you can't even understand until you mature. <laughs> when you mature spiritually, you understand that God didn't send this, but he allowed it. And there must be something on the back end of it that's for my perpetuation. Because so, I'm coming out. God didn't strike Job. Satan did. That's in the first two chapters, Job chapter 1, Job chapter 2. But Job doesn't have Job 1 and 2. So all he knows in the supernatural realm is God. So he said, the Lord gives, and the Lord take. God didn't say that. Job said that, that. But on the back end, Job said, blessed be the name of the Lord. Naked came I into this world. Naked I'm going out. And then watch what he said. But when God is finished. So let's just make it to New Testament. When, when God allows this, I'm coming forth as pure gold. So in and for, Father, I give you praise. I lift my... Well, it, 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 there's, 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 there's a maturity in the believer when you can lift your hands with tears in your eyes. And you can bless God when you don't understand. We know this, and I'm just going to hit these very quickly. Angels uh, constantly surround the throne of God. They are, they, are, they are created to maintain an atmosphere where God lives in heaven, and they are instruments of praise and worship. Satan, who was Lucifer, was God's worship creature, a worship uh, leader. He guarded the throne of God, and at the same time as the anointed cherub, that covered the throne of God, Ezekiel chapter 28. Um, the scripture says there were various pipes that came out of his body. All kinds of musical sounds could come out of him, and he was perfect. He was flawless. He had precious stones, and because of his beauty and perfections, he became lifted up and stopped worshiping God and began to worship himself. There are perils to be avoided for people who don't worship. Psalm 148, 1 and 2, um, you're going to see that to come on the screen very quickly. I didn't send those up, but just look at it. Psalm number 148, verse 1 and 2. Then we're going to Isaiah chapter 6 and verse 3. The angels flew around the throne of God and said, holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. So we saw that's what happens in the various levels of the angelic world. Praise ye the Lord, praise ye the Lord from the heavens. This is what angels do. This is the environment of God. This is the atmosphere of God. Praise him in the heights. The next verse, verse 2. Please praise him. Praise ye him, all his angels. Praise ye him, all his hosts. That's the host of angels. And uh, Hebrews chapter 12, uh, we start at verse 20, tells us that uh, as New Testament believers, you've been called into an innumerable company of angels. So there are millions and billions and trillions of angels, and they have an assignment from God to put on the screen, if you will, Hebrews chapter 1, verse 13. 
Hebrews chapter 1, verse 13, chapter 1, verse, okay, well, that's 12 and 20. Uh, <laughs> but to which of the angels said he at any time, sit on my right hand until I mate, make thine enemies thy footstool. So at the end of the day, God has assigned angels to bring every enemy in your life to nothing. Come on. He knows that the enemies are there because you're living in a fallen planet. But you belong to God. Now watch what he says. That, and angels are still the subject here. Uh, uh, angels is still the subject. Here it is, verse next, 14. Thank you. Are they, angels, not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for whom? Them who shall be, and we are now the what? Heirs of salvation. So that means that there are angels that God has assigned to get you out of mess. But they don't come in any atmosphere just because you're there. They come in an atmosphere that they have been created to maintain, and it's an atmosphere of praise, worship, and thanksgiving. They can change anything. Remember I told you the word of the Lord that came to me when I bisected this message of transformation uh, beginning Thanksgiving uh, with this message. He said, some of my people who are saved, they called on my name. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And he said, there are many people who have never been taught to praise me. They never said praise the Lord. Never. I said, what you say, God? He said, no, he never said it. Then he said, there are others who have never said, praise God. And he said, there are still others who never lifted their hands. I said, what? He said, I can't even access them because there's an, there's an atmosphere that has to be created and maintained in order for me to move in. I'm the king of kings. I don't move in foolishness. I move in worship. God uses angels. Oh, let's just do this. Um, look at Hebrews chapter 1, verse 6. Hebrews chapter 1, verse 6. Quickly, quickly, quickly. And then from there, I'm going to Revelation chapter 5, verse 8. Hebrews chapter 1, verse 6. And again, when he bringeth in the first begotten into this world, Jesus, he saith, and let all the angels of God do what? Worship him. So if he brought him in the earth under the cover of worship, how you going to get him in your earth? Worship. Things going wrong. Lord, I worship you. Not for this wrong, but because we used to sing a song here, because of who you are, Shano, I give you glory. Because of who you are, I give you praise. Because of who you are, I will lift my voice and say, Lord, I worship you because. Have you gotten there yet? Lord, I worship you just because of who you are. My change is strange, but I worship you because of who you are. Don't feel like it, but I worship you because of who you are. You're still the king of kings. I've given you some definitions. I need to run through them. Let, allow me to coast. I call these uh, definitions atmosphere setters. Atmosphere setters. Praise. Praise is a thank offering for things forthcoming. Things forthcoming. Don't, you don't want to sleep on this one. Some of y'all stayed up too late last night. And you need to get this. You're going to need this. You're going to need this this year. Praise is a thank offering for things forthcoming, i.e., or for example, deliverance. And it must, remember again, must be done in times of challenge. In times of challenge. Secondly, it's the word glory. Glory. Glory, whatever it is, Ephesians 3 tells us that all glory belongs to God whose power is at work in us. He's, it's like God is uh, 
attempting to, to, to get some things resolved in our lives, but he can't access the power until the climate is right. Uh, how many, okay, yeah, I'll show you that. Now, a few minutes ago, I asked you, what's the temperature fine? And 90% it sounded like to me, said, it's cold. <laughs> and I said, you do the most, <laughs> right? So what was your mind on? What I'm saying, what I'm teaching you, or the climate? The climate. Because it wasn't right for you. So you couldn't get it. You wanted to get it. You know, some of you, you know, you, you came in, thank God for you, you, you coming down from what happened last night. <laughs> thank God. I, I, I know what I'm looking at. I, I get it. But thank God you're here. Thank God. I'm going to do my best to get you all the way on the ground before I get finished. <laughs> but what, what am I saying? The atmosphere has everything to do with what goes on. Even though you're here, the atmosphere has an effect, has an, effect, has an impact on what it is you can receive or not receive. Amen. If you think God is any different, God is now expected to somehow come in in, in a situation that is adverse, that is not conducive, because somebody didn't teach you this, or because you didn't feel like it, he's still the king. See, he's a different kind of king. David, David's a king, and David says, who is this king of glory? The Lord strong and mighty. He is the Lord mighty in battle. battle he is the king of glory. And then he says, open the... Uh, Let's put it up there. Psalm 24 and 7. I want to say it is. 24 and 7. I want to show you something with this. I'm trying to just stand right here because if I start moving, I won't get finished with this and I need to get finished. Psalm number 24, verse 7. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, and, and be ye lift up ye everlasting doors. This is metaphorical language. He's talking to people of God. And the upper K letter king of what? Glory shall do what? Come in. Next verse, please. Who is this king? Now, this is a king talking about another king he sees prophetically coming through the annals of time. He says, it is the Lord, the Lord Jesus, really, strong and mighty, the Lord, come on, mighty in battle, come on. Next verse, please. Lift up your heads, and then he calls you metaphorically a gate, which means... Whether you lift your head and lift your voice to praise dictates whether this king can come in through your gate. You saved, but you got him gated out. He says, Pushand. <laughs> Glory to God. Okay, George, you got to move on. So glory is heaviness or weight. It's the Hebrew word, kabod, K-E-B-O-D, Greek word, doxa, D-O-X-A, and it means um, kabod, the heaviness, the heft, the weight of God. It's God on a scale. The scale has been tipped away from God with sickness, disease. It's been on the scale. Lack of money on the scale. It's weighted down. But when you begin to enter into glory, God steps on the scale and tips his favor in your direction. That's what your praise does. Kushallah. Have you ever noticed that the, the enemy doesn't want you to praise God when you're in trouble? You've got to ask yourself the question why that is. It's, it's almost adverse to your nature. It goes against the grain when you begin to praise God. And then some, I'm too cool for that, but when Alabama plays... When Auburn plays. Come on, y'all don't want to talk now. Third word is the word thanksgiving. It's the Greek word, excuse me, Hebrew word, todah. T-O-D-A-H, and it's pronounced todah. And it means raising the hands. When the last time you did that? 
man, woman, boy, girl. When was the last time in the midst of a challenge you raised your hands and let every devil hear you say, praise the Lord. I will bless the Lord. It's an act of your will at all times and his praise shall continually be in my mouth. Whether the tribes go up, the tribes of the Lord, unto the testimony of Israel, let us give thanks unto the name of the Lord. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it and is safe. Come on here. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord, oh, my soul. And forget not all his benefits. He daily loadeth me with benefits. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, the name of the Lord is worthy to be praised. Come on, somebody. Yeah. Bless you forevermore. Fourth word is the word worship. It's the Hebrew word shakal, and it means to prostrate, not to be confused with the male gland. To prostrate, to uh, on, on the floor, to kneel. It's a it's a it's a posture word. To kneel, to bow, uh, to bend in some way, to give deference, to give homage to something or someone that is greater than you. Lord, I'm in the midst of a situation, but God is greater. Come on, I said, but God is greater. 1 John 4, 4, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. So I give you my worship, Lord. Hallelujah. The fifth is the word complain. These are, the, these are atmosphere setters as well. You can be a complainer and God can see you but can't get to you. God can hear you but can't touch you. And, and he wants to do something about it, but complaints. Uh, put it on the screen, if you will, uh, num numbers 11 and 1. I'll get, come back and pick that up in a minute. The word complain means to utter expressions of strong disapproval, harsh criticism, or resentment. It, it, it means that you have somehow blamed God as if your situation dictates that God can't change it. So when I complain, it's saying, I, I'm, I find myself in this negative, distasteful situation, but my complaint is saying, I no longer believe that God has already done something about it. Here it is, uh, Numbers chapter 11, verse 1. And when the people complained, it displeased the Lord. Now you get over to Hebrews chapter 4, verses 3 and 4. It tells you that God had already provided a way for them to get into the promised land before the foundation of the world. If that is true, may I also tell you that God has provided a way to, for you to get out of any situation before you ever came into the planet and worship ushers him into it. He didn't find out about your challenge when you did. Like you got to complain to tell God something he doesn't already know. He's, he's so powerful, he knew you were coming. And he knew every challenge that the enemy would bring to you. Put it on the screen, if you will. 1 Corinthians chapter 10. I almost feel like teaching now, and I, got, I need to leave, though, in just a few minutes. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13. 1 Corinthians, the New Testament one. Because uh, sometimes people get Corinthians and Chronicles confused. So I say the New Testament Corinthians. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13. There hath no temptation taken you, but... So, is this helping anybody? Yeah. Then this is a personal note to you. This is to G, that's me. George, there has no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But in the midst of the thing, God is faithful. Come on, shout it with me. God is faithful. God is faithful. That wasn't a shout. Shout it with me. God is faithful. God is faithful. Now make it personal. My God is faithful. Yeah, that means that the situation may come and it may be adverse, but my God is faithful. 
who will not suffer you to be tempted above that which you are able and will with the temptation provide a way of escape that you may be able to bear it. God already knew the challenge was coming and he gave you a way out of the challenge. Glory to God forevermore. Murmur, sixth word is the word murmur. It means to find fault. And then seventh is the word grumble, murmuring through discontent. A, grumble, a grumbling person is a person who is faithless and they are complaining. Your complaining means you've lost your faith. You're either complaining or you bless it. You're either worrying or you're worshiping. Come on. Yes, amen. amen. St. Matthew chapter 2, verse 2. This is Matthew writing to us about the nativity, the birth of Jesus. Watch this. This is this different kind of king. <laughs> Saying, where is he? This is Herod now. This Roman officer, and Roman has overrun Rome has overrun Jerusalem, and so Jerusalem is under Roman siege. And so Herod now says to these magi, these probably 25, 50, 100 men who are traveling, oh, Lord, don't, don't, don't let me do that. Don't let me do that. This is going to do something else to me. So Herod says, where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and are come to worship him. Better, this is the magi saying this because they are saying this atmosphere we, 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 we really don't, we're astrologers. We don't, we're, not, we're not worshipers. Watch me now. But we saw one star. Now this hit me yesterday. How many stars are there in the galaxy? There are literally millions, if not billions, in just this Milky Way galaxy in which we live with these eight planets, because they now say we don't have a ninth. And say Pluto is no longer a planet. Why y'all look at me like that? Y'all know I know what I'm talking about. It's like, every time I tell you something, I know what I'm talking about. Now, I still say it's nine. But modern science says there are eight. And Pluto is not really considered a planet any longer. Well, regardless of that, you need to come here about that. In this galaxy, this one in, inside of millions of other galaxies, outside of this one, there are trillions of stars. I'm trying to figure out how did God get one star to outshine all the stars? And so I, 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 was, I, was, I was reeling from that, and the Lord says, my star still outshines all other stars. Let me tell you what that meant. That means you can be in a million times and a million pieces of problems, but if your worship is right, one star, a star shining and guide you out of the problem to the solution. Because that's exactly what these magi, magi experienced. They started in the, come on, in the west. And they had to come to the east. And they only had a star. And God said to me, he said, that's all I'm trying to get you to understand now, G. That's me. He said, if the worship, the praise, and the environment is right, I still show up. And through one star, he that is born king of the Jews, my worship, your worship, my praise, your praise, my thanksgiving, your thanksgiving will cause that star to come up and I'll shine every problem that you're in and lead you to the solution that God has already crafted for your life. He's still doing the exact same thing. But watch this. They said, we have come to worship him. That means what? They knew this star can't continue to shine if the worship isn't right. 
We're going to work. And see, when they brought their treasures and the star, the scripture said the star led them just to the place where the child was. And when they, when they came to the place, they found Jesus and they opened their treasures and presented them to the parents and the child. What does that tell us? The star is still designed to lead you from the challenge to the solution. And when you get to the solution, you're going to have treasures. And then watch this. Then Herod tried to get on it. That's what I started saying before. Herod tried to get on it and said, now, you come back and tell me when you found him that I can go worship him. Now, you know Herod didn't want to worship. Why? Why? Because he knew as it goes with kings. Lord, I don't want to go here. If one king comes into another king's jurisdiction, that means war. And Herod wanted to wipe him out. He wanted to wipe him out to such a degree, he started killing children to try to annihilate Jesus. But how many of you know, where there is worship, praise, and thanksgiving, you can't stop the king. I found a secret here. You can't stop him. I said you can't, he cannot be stopped. Come on, say it. Praise the Lord. Acts chapter 16, verse 25. Around midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God. Now, they had just been beaten. They had just been flogged. Uh, really, they'd been beaten with the cat of nine tails. Uh, the Philippians did learn this from the Romans. And so these guys have been beaten, taken, their clothes taken off of them because they performed a miracle in the city. And they are thrown into jail, right? And I'm trying to figure out why didn't they talk about what they were experiencing. They didn't murmur. They didn't complain. They didn't grumble. What did they do? They prayed and sang hymns to God. The New Living Translation says, your King James Version said they sang praises to God. And how should my praise be regulated? Here it is. And the other prisoners were listening. King James Version says, and they heard them. Can the people on your row even hear you? <laughs> Has your spouse ever heard you? Has your child ever heard you? I'm just, just going to submit this one, okay, because I'm teaching, right? If your spouse hadn't heard you and your child hasn't heard you, and the other prisoners who are in the same situation with you haven't heard you, why would you think your problem is going to hear you? And the prisoners heard them. Suddenly, there was a massive earthquake. And, and I'm going to add a word for clarity. Just the prison was shaken to its foundation. You've never seen an earthquake like that. When an earthquake hits the city, it, it, it has ruins all over. But no, the city was intact. How many of you know your problem, the challenge that you're facing, is not the same as someone else's challenge? You just need an earthquake on your challenge. <laughs> Lord, Lord, <laughs> Lord. I just heard this while I'm trying to stand flat-footed today. Your earthquake won't help me. I need my own earthquake. So if I need my own earthquake, I need my own praise. I need my own worship. I need my own voice to my thanksgiving. Hallelujah. Y'all not quite there yet, but you're going to get here. There was a massive earthquake. All the doors immediately flew open. And the chains of every prisoner fell off. The jailer woke up to see the prison doors wide open. He assumed the prisoners had escaped, so he drew his sword to kill himself. But Paul shouted to him, stop, don't kill yourself. We're all here. <laughs> we, 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 we know the secret, man. If you put us back in here, we know how to get out again. <laughs> 
that some of y'all that went over your head right there. <laughs> Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Bless his name. I said bless his name. I said bless his name. For the Lord is good. For the Lord is good. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting. His mercy is everlasting. His mercy is everlasting. Glory. Huh. Huh. Glory. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory. Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. Glory. Some of you still don't get it. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. If you challenged in here, you're going to have severe challenges out there. But if you can learn how to praise in here, you break out when you get out there. Hallelujah. You're uncontrollable when you get out there. The devil knows when, you, when he shows up with a challenge in your life, you just learn the key to how to get out of every problem is through your praise. I receive it in Jesus' name. This is the identity of the believer. This is the identity of the believer. That's why he said, let everything to have breath. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory. Glory to God. Bless his name. Bless his name. Bless his name. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless your name forevermore. Glory. Come on now, I need to hurry. Watch this. What happened? What happened? Verse 29, the jailer called for lights and ran to the dungeon where the prisoner was prison was and fell down trembling before Paul and Silas. Don't you want to make your problems tremble at your feet? I just read to you, he said, he's assigned angels to make your enemies your footstool. Now here this man is who has imprisoned them, trembling. Trembling. I'm trying to help somebody today because in 2023, the Lord sent me by here to tell you, you can make your problems tremble. Tremble. The affliction may come, but you're going to make it tremble this year. Not only are you coming out, but you're going to make every problem tremble at your feet. Glory to God. Watch me. Then he brought them out. <laughs> then he brought them out. Then he brought them out. Then he brought them out. <laughs> and ask, sirs. See, I'm telling you to put some respect on it. Not only will the Lord bring you out, but he's going to make the devil respect you. See, you, you hadn't you gone any distance until hell knows your name. Challenges show up in your life because hell knows your name. You got a name in heaven, but you also got a name in hell. Receive this and release your blessing on your life in the name of Jesus.
Watch this. Sirs, what must I do to be saved? They replied, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved along with everyone in your household. And they shared the word of the Lord with him and with all who lived in his household. I'm calling for household salvation. I receive that in Jesus' name. Release your destiny on your life in the name of Jesus. Watch this now. Even at that hour in the night or of the night, the jailer cared for them and washed their wounds. The same one who was punishing them is now replenishing them. If the thief be found, he must restore sevenfold all the substance of his house that he stole from you. When you know how to praise, God will make the enemy pay you back. Glory to God. Glory to God. Don't let people stifle your praise. That's your key. That's your deliverance. That's your breakout. Hallelujah. Watch me now. He brought them into his house. He washed their wounds. Then he and everyone in his household were immediately baptized. See, that's why I was trying to tell you earlier. In everything as well as for everything, because you don't know what's behind some of those things. See, these men were praising God, not knowing. And, and see, they, they legitimately shouldn't have been beaten. They shouldn't have been in prison. They shouldn't have had their uh, character maligned. Uh, all these things, negative things happened to them. But it didn't hamper their praise because they knew God's still on the throne. If he allowed this, there must be something bigger. Yeah. To which I can attach myself with my praise. God had the prison officials in his mind. If he, can, if he had some boys who knew how God worked, who could trust God, even when they, as the Baptist boy said, you can't trace him. And I kind of like that. You kind of, you got to learn how to trust him when you can't trace him. It don't look like he's in it, but your praise, even if he isn't in it, your praise will attract his presence. George, you got to get on the road. Okay, watch this, watch this, watch this. Next morning, the city officials sent the police to tell the jailer, let those men go. So the jailer told Apostle Paul, the city officials have said, you and Silas are free to go, to leave, go in peace. But Paul replied, he knows something. They publicly beat us without a trial and put us in prison and we're Roman citizens. I will get into that, but I don't have the time to lay that out for you. And, and so now you want us to leave secretly? <laughs> Y'all don't hear me. I'm trying to tell you part of your praise. If you have secret praise, you have secret small deliverance. But if you could see, they had made their praise public. So Paul said, no, we can't, we can't have no private deliverance because our praise was public. So if my praise is public, some devil got to see God deliver me. if I just had a little more time. If I just had a little more time. Okay, okay, so watch this. Certainly not. Let them come themselves to release us. Exclamation point. <laughs> when the police reported this, the city officials were alarmed to learn that Paul and Silas were Roman citizens. Can I tell you, you are a citizen, not a Rome. You are a kingdom citizen. 
and devils can't just be treating you any kind of way. Your praise identifies your citizenship. Your praise identifies your citizenship. And if you're a citizen of heaven, your praise ought to sound like. So, so, so they came to the jail and apologized to them. Some of you have some apologies on the way. See, when, you, when your praise, your worship, your thanksgiving gets to a level that you're no longer concerned about who did you wrong, you're just going to praise God anyway. God said, I'll make your enemies turn around and bless you. Get your mind off your enemies. Keep your mind on your praise. So they came to the jail and apologized to them. They, they brought, then they brought them out and begged them, whatever you do, just, just leave. <laughs> we know we can't do nothing with you. So just leave. Now, y'all, let me try to do this in two minutes. I need to be... This is the spoils right here now. Second Chronicles chapter 20, verse 15. Now, you need to get this and just take this one home with you. This is Colossians chapter 2, verse 15. Jesus spoiled principalities and powers, made sure of them openly, triumphing over them in it. The word spoil means gain. This, your praise, worship, and thanksgiving are designed to connect you to gain. It, it means you're disarming the enemy of something. You're, you're loosing your valuables. So here now you have the people of God who have had three Confederate armies come against them. This is the New Living Translation, 2 Chronicles 20, 15. And now God raises up a prophet in the midst of them because they said, Lord, our eyes are on you. We don't know what to do. He said, listen, verse 15, I'm dropping you into the narrative. Listen, all you people of Judah and Jerusalem. Now, uh, Israel has been splintered at this point in time. And Judah, two tribes versus the ten tribes uh, of otherwise of Israel. Now, the word Judah means praise. So now this is, this is God talking to the praisers and the other ten tribes of Israel. He says, listen, King Jehoshaphat, this is what the Lord says. Do not be afraid. See, when your praise is right, you lose fear. Don't have time. Don't be discouraged. You lose discouragement. Your praise is, is, is indicative of your courage by this mighty army, for the battle is not yours, but God's. Tomorrow, somebody shout it out with me, tomorrow. tomorrow. I said shout it out. Tomorrow. tomorrow, march out against them. You will find them, God told them where the enemy was. You'll find them coming up through the ascent of Ziz at the end of the valley that opens into the wilderness of Jeruel. But you will not even need to fight. You're a believer. Believers don't fight. God has angels that fight for you. You're not a soldier in the army of the Lord. God has his own angel armies. You don't fight. You praise. You worship. You give God thanksgiving and the armies will be dispatched in your situation. Take your positions. That's a position of praise. Then stand still and watch the Lord's victory. He is with you, O people of Judah and Jerusalem. Do not be afraid or discouraged. Go out against them tomorrow, for the Lord is with you. Then King Jehoshaphat bowed low with his face to the ground. That's what I was telling you about uh, lowering yourself and being prostrate before the Lord. And, and Jerusalem, the people did the same. Watch it. What's the next word? Yeah. Worshiping who? The Lord. They had a battle. They had a battle. They had enemies all around them. But they are worshiping. They're bowing. They're not fighting. Worshiping the Lord. Then the Levites, these are the singers and the musicians. And from the clans of Kohath and Korah stood to what? 
Praise the Lord, the God of Israel with a very loud shout. Early the next morning, the army of Judah went out into the wilderness of Tekoa on the way Jehoshaphat stopped and said, listen to me, O you people of Judah and Jerusalem, believe in the Lord your God and you will be able to stand firm, but believe in your pastor, believe in the apostle, believe in the evangelist, the prophet and the teacher, believe in his prophets and you will succeed. Your King James Version says you will prosper. Now they're in the middle of a battle, but he's talking to them about prosperity in the middle of a battle. Why? Because this man, this prophet has just been raised up to tell them, don't fight, praise. And he had to tell them, the king said, wait a minute, I know it sounds crazy, I know it sounds ridiculous, but this a prophet. Believe in the prophet, so shall you prosper against the battle that you engaged in. Watch this now, watch this, and I'm finishing. After consulting the people, the king appointed, the king appointed, to walk ahead, ahead of the army, sing, singing to the Lord and, and, and praising him with, for his holy splendor. This is what they sang. Give thanks to the Lord. His faithful love endures forever. Let's say that. Give thanks to the Lord. His faithful love endures forever. Come on, I need my time. I, I, at that very moment, they began to sing and give praise. The Lord caused the armies of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir to start fighting among themselves. The armies of Moab and Ammon turned against the, their allies from Mount Seir and killed every one of them. After they had destroyed the army of Seir, they began attacking each other. So when the army of Judah arrived at the lookout point in the wilderness, all they saw. All they saw. All they saw were dead bodies lying on the ground. As far, come on. As they could see, not a single one of the army had escaped. King Jehoshaphat and his men went out to, not, not, wait, wait a minute, not just deliverance, but now you, you owed something. To gather the plunder, they found vast amounts of equipment, clothing, and other valuables. They called it, in your King James Version, the spoils. There was so much plunder, spoils. That it took them three days just to collect it. They, they're not spending anything yet just to collect it all. This is what they praise had connected them to. They didn't understand how powerful God was that he didn't need his own children to fight. He just needed them to do what we do and that's praise. On the fourth day they gathered in the valley of blessing you. Your King James Version calls it Barak. Former president's middle name which got its name that day because the people praised and thanked God there. Have you learned how to praise and thank God there? Right there. When things don't look good. When you don't feel like it. When people have trashed your name and made you lower than a junkyard dog. But that hasn't bothered you now because you understand something. This is not even about them. This is about your maturity in God. Do you believe the word of God? Do you believe he's still on the throne? Do you believe that your God is good? Well, bless his name. 
Then all the men returned to Jerusalem with Jehoshaphat leading them, overjoyed that the Lord had given them victory over their enemies. They marched into Jerusalem to the music of harps, lyres, and trumpets, and they proceeded to the temple of the Lord. They went to church, loaded with stuff. When all the surrounding kingdoms heard that the Lord himself had fought against the enemies of Israel, the fear of God came over them. So Jehoshaphat's kingdom was at peace, for his God had given him rest. Praise, worship, thanksgiving. Come on, join me on your feet. Father, I lift my hands over this congregation, your precious people. I declare now in the name of Jesus that as we go into this year, we trust you. We trust you, Lord. Our trust is dictated by our praise, our worship, our thanksgiving. We bless you, Lord, in advance of every problem. <laughs> Lord, you have enough money to build another world. So we don't have money challenges. We lift our hands and declare the Lord is good. Every sickness that Satan would send our way, we lift our hands and say that you are Jehovah Rapha. You're the Lord that healeth. And we praise you right now. Now say this, Heavenly Father, thank you for sending Jesus Christ into the earth to die for all of my sins. Jesus, I receive you as Savior and Lord over my life now. Now listen, if you're here today, our ministers are going to be standing me stage left to stage right. Pastor Jay is going to come out and make a special announcement or two, and then uh, Valparaiso will close up. Uh, if you're here and you, you, you need to join this ministry, why? And we always have our, our ministers and counselors here after the services have closed so that people can come up and, and do it, uh, and, and it makes it easy. But today, I just want to ask you, if you're here and the Lord has spoken to you about New Life Interfaith Ministries, and he's talked to you about, even if you're on the Birmingham East Side and it's talked to you about Calvary, we can take care of both in, in either house. But if you're here and the Lord has talked to you about this ministry, we want to invite, invite you to come now. Collect your personal effects, your Bible, your books, your keys, and step out from where you're standing and come on down right now. Ministers or counselors will be standing here, stage left and stage right. Even after services are closed, they're going to still be standing here. So if you're here and the Lord has talked to you, come on, Pastor Jay, you good? The Lord's talked to you about anything about this church. You want to start the year off right and, and get where you need to, to be. I want to invite you to come. I want to invite you to come. Are you here? Are the persons that are here? You're not a member yet. And you know you need to be in a place that you can hear the word of God and grow. You, you know, you're, you're ready to grow. You're ready to change. You're ready to see God move in your life. And there are no barriers to God. God can get through anything, provided the atmosphere is right. Are you here? Well, our ministers and counselors will be here, but they didn't come up right now, but they'll be here left and right, I, I, I'm assured, and they are, they'll be able to take care of whatever needs to happen. Everybody just say praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. God bless you. I love you all. I'll talk to you soon. Praise God. Let's just applaud God for his word today. Amen. Praise God. Before you take your seat, real quickly, I just want to read uh, to you a letter that I received in the mail. It says, Dear New Life Interfaith Ministries, at Regions, we value our relationship with you. We are writing to let you know we have received the final payment covering the balance of your loan account and that the loan on New Life Center of Excellence is now paid in full. Praise God. Hallelujah. 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 You know, we believe, God, that by December, we would not take the debt of New Life Center of Excellence into 2023. And I am so happy to let you know that we 
are not carrying that debt into this year, 2023. Praise God. Hallelujah. Now, to just give you an idea, we have made 151 payments. To my knowledge, Elder Karen, you are here. We have never paid a payment late. We have never had a late fee, and that amount totals over $4.5 million that this little church in Bessemer, Alabama has paid in full over $4.5 million. And we own New Life Center of Excellence. Hallelujah. Praise God. Come on, Val. I'm super excited. Y'all know I've been telling y'all about this for a minute. And so I'm so grateful that we can now put this in our file and know that that building is paid in full. We're not 100% out of debt, but we are well on our way. Amen. So thank you, New Life, and thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Now, you know what makes this so good is even in the middle of the pandemic, even in the middle of being shut down for over two years, God was still faithful to us through you. And we still yet made every payment through the pandemic on time, before time, paying extra. And so now we have paid this loan off before. Before. Before it was due. It is paid in full. So we have paid this church off in full. Now we have paid our New Life Center of Excellence off in full. And listen, just like God did it for us, he'll do it for you. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Don't stop praising him. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I look forward to the testimony of, of personal mortgages being paid off just the same way. Hallelujah. My God, my God. Well, take your seats. I have just a few things to share with you, and we're going to be out of here. You know, this morning when I was just thinking, getting ready, and, and thinking about the goodness of God, you know, um, for whatever reason, that little saying, you know, when you see something, say something, came to my mind, and then the Lord said, and he just confirmed it this morning. No, when you know something, say something. So when we know <laughs> that there's power in praise, say something. When we know that we can gather the spoils, say something. Hallelujah. When we know that praises, our praises shift the atmosphere, we ought to say something. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. So um, we just want to encourage everyone to tune in to our Word of the Day segments on Tuesday through Friday and join Pastor tomorrow night for the Silence of Our Friends streaming at 6.30 p.m. And we look forward to seeing each and every one of you uh, next Sunday. And if you will just allow me just a moment, my family, my family has been praying together every single morning at 5 a.m., for well over a year now. We've been meeting on, on Sunday evenings for over four years, and the Lord has really blessed us. And I wanna share something with you today. Every time we get together and when we're leaving, we say, well, first we give thanks. <laughs> we give thanks. And then we, uh, we speak these words from Numbers 6, 24 through 20. Uh, 26 and Ephesians 3 14 through 20 so if you allow me I want to speak those words in this atmosphere over every one of us and you too that are joining us um, virtually the Lord bless thee and keep thee the Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee the Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace for this cause for this cause I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man, that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, 
that ye being rooted and grounded in love may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth and length and depth and height and to know the love of Christ which passeth knowledge that ye might be a, that ye might be filled with all the fullness of God. Now this is the part we're very familiar with. Now unto him. Come on, let's let's go ahead and stand while we say this. Hallelujah. Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us unto him be glory in the church by christ jesus throughout all ages world without end amen hallelujah just real quickly we're not going to hold you but i also wanted to acknowledge and miss nora just reminded me today also marks 30 years in ministry for new life interfaith ministries we started the first sunday in 1993 and so we started in a storefront about two blocks over in 1993 with 12 members well brother jess is not in here miss mary is here miss b i know nora was a part of that first 12 and it was a few other people but just think about that on that day 30 years ago we started new life interfaith ministries and then here god gives us that opportunity to pay that building off. 30 years, 30 years, here we are, and we have two buildings. When people told us that we wouldn't make it, Miss B, when they told us that we were gonna be dissolved, when they told us that it wasn't gonna stand, when they told us we couldn't build a million dollar building in Bessemer, when they told us no, 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 when they couldn't, when, would not finance us, look at where we are today. To God be the glory for the great things he has done. This is a better day for New Life Interfaith Ministries, and the best is still yet to come. Amen. Amen. All right, Belle. Dismissed.